This month has truly been a month of embracing my toxic masculinity and Right off the bat, iced coffee. I'm no male manipulator because you know how I know and we know that a male manipulator would be drinking like hot black bitter coffee out of a, a, a tin can. So ma a male manipulator. Uh, I believe the term male manipulator came to existence on TikTok and it was mainly around like music. Urban Dictionary knows. A meme that originated on the app TikTok about a specific subgenre of music. The joke is something along the lines of if they listen to this music run. Examples are Radiohead, The Smiths, The Cure. I I I listen to Radiohead, I listen to The Smiths, I do think I listen to The Cure, but I feel like a bit more recently it's kind of morphed into different areas of media. I mean, there's definitely like film bros. They're the type of people that are like, what's your favorite movie? And if you say like a romantic comedy, they will shoot you. They'll shoot you with their guns. And it's trickled its way into books. In the book world online, there has been some books that have become known as like male manipulator books. From my understanding, a male manipulator is just like exactly what it sounds like, like a manipulative male. <laughs> When I picture a male manipulator, I picture painted black nails, like a flannel, like a little black beanie. I threw- I, I put this on last minute because my hair was fucked up. Some type of like stupid little chain. Some type of stupid little chain. <laughs> I've decided I kind of want to get in their head a little bit. And I'm going to read some of the books that are considered male manipulator books. Before you say anything, yes, every single one of these books is written by a man. <laughs> the first book that I'm gonna read is Franny and Zoe by J.D. Salinger. I read The Catcher in the Rye, J.D. Salinger's most famous book. And that definitely is like a staple male manipulator book, but I've read it, I just didn't love. But we're gonna give Mr. J.D. another shot with this, which is about Franny and Zoe who are brother and sister. Zoe is a man. Crazy, huh? There's no synopsis on the back, and honestly, I don't care to look one up. It's only like 170 pages. I believe they go to college. I don't know. The next one is The Stranger by Albert Camus. <laughs> Can you imagine? Albert Camus. Camus? This is a story about an ordinary man who unwittingly gets drawn into a senseless murder on a sun-drenched Algerian beach. Camus explored what he termed the nakedness of man faced with the absurd. The next one is Diary of an Oxygen Thief by Anonymous. I just saw something fucking insane. I just glimpsed from this little paragraph. Let me read it. This is my first time reading this. Remember what I just said and be prepared for what I'm going to say in a little bit. <laughs> so the first line is hurt people, hurt people. Say Holden Caulfield was an alcoholic and Lolita was a photographer's assistant and somehow they met in bright lights, big city. I think this is a very disturbing book and it's very controversial. I feel like you either love it or you absolutely hate it. I definitely like absurd, disturbing books, so I have a feeling I'm going to like it, but I really don't know. The next one, of, of course. Are you kidding me? Doing this video without having Mr. Murakami in it? But it's not Norwegian Wood because I've already read Norwegian Wood. I read Norwegian Wood probably over a year ago now. I didn't like it. Supposedly Norwegian Wood is his outlier. The main thing that he writes is surreal, wacky, dreamlike. Did I just say wacky? From what I understand, most of his books are very dreamlike. But this one's about an advertising executive who receives a postcard from a friend and casually appropriates the image for an advertisement. What he doesn't realize is that in the scene is a mutant sheep with a star on its back. And in using this photo, he has unwittingly captured the attention of a man who offers a menacing ultimatum. Find the sheep or face dire consequences. And then the last two I don't have. A dog is a... Hell for, from something. 
I don't, it's this one. I don't remember what it's called, but it's Bukowski. This poetry collection, I understand is like very misogynistic, problematic. I, I really don't know anything about it. I just know that I'm very excited to read it. The last one that I'm gonna read is Lolita, which from my understanding is about a girl who basically gets groomed. From what I've heard, the writing is beautiful, but the plot, the story, it's just very disturbing. And I enjoy books that kind of put you in the mind of like a psychopath or like someone who's very disturbed. And I think that Lolita gets a very bad rap because it can be thought of as like pro-pedophile or glamorizing relationships between young girls and older men. I mean, L Lana, hey, Lana. But I think that the book itself, if you read it critically, I don't know, I haven't read it yet, so I have no idea. So I'm gonna read that and, oh my God, that's like seven books. They're all really short. So hopefully I'll be able to read them pretty quick and <laughs> get back to you with my thoughts on them. Um, this? Mama, this is garbage. <laughs> this is the stupidest shit. What? Like, it's j it's giving me a panic attack. It's so bad that it's giving me a fucking panic attack. I can't. Like, this is scary. Listen to this. It's the same as before or the other time or the time before that. Here's a <laughs> and here's a and here's trouble. What does that mean? What the fuck is that? Like, it says that. It genuinely says that. I'm gonna have to blur that, but... That is something that it, he genuinely wrote down. And was like, that's really good. I think that actually is good. And somehow, like, tons of people agree. What is this? Should I take it? I realized it would it would it would literally be sacrilege to not have at least a little tiny beanie on my head for this video because it's not cultural appropriation it's cultural appreciation. I'm just embracing my toxic masculinity. Am I allowed to embrace my toxic masculinity? And I got a new beanie too. So I finished the books. I read the six male manipulator books. It took me a month. I read some other stuff too. It wasn't a great reading month. I didn't read anything else. So the first one that I read was Diary of an Oxygen Thief by um, Anonymous. Isn't that the name of those guys or people? I feel like there's probably some women behind those masks and they're like hacking into the capital web. Whatever. They've never actually done anything, I don't think, though. This is gonna be so bad. But apparently they're on like the FBI number one most watched list. So maybe they have done something, I'm just not in the loop.
nor do I care to be. But yeah, this book, it was like quintessential, shut the fuck up, you are such an annoying, stupid, miserable man. I don't care. Find a hobby, find some peace. It was about a guy who worked at some like advertising company and then he moved to America. I honestly don't remember. All I really remember is he talked about women in a way that was really fucked up and his relationships with women is really fucked up. His opinion on women was super fucked up. It just was fucked up in a way that was not insightful or had any real substance. It was just like sex, women. And it just kept on doing that, like over and over and over again. The writing really wasn't anything special. There was nothing, there was nothing special about it. The synopsis compares it to Catcher in the Rye and Lolita. Now that I've read Lolita, mm -hmm. No, this book doesn't compare anywhere near either of those books and Catcher in the Rye, I don't even like that much. But at least that book, I feel like had some substance and intrigue. This one was just like, I'm a man and I'm depressed. I wanna fuck. The next book that I read was The Stranger by Albert Camus. I did hear his name is actually Albert though. I was watching Pato's video and they said Albert. And I was like, oh. Okay. But this book I loved so much. It was about a man who was living in Algeria, which at the time, it was like the 40s, France occupied Algeria. It was about a man who um, was depressed. But he was depressed in like a fun <laughs> way. Unlike the main character in Diary of an Oxygen Thief, who was kind of just depressed in a... Uh, way. I guess I could like, I hate to say this, but like sensationalize it a little bit and be like, damn, this is so me. Like on my Lana shit, like. <laughs> this is so me. Um, something happens in like the middle of the book that completely flips the book on its head and turns it into something completely different. Honestly, the beginning half was just him like vibing in Algeria. He kind of like falls in love with the girl. His mother dies, going to the beach. But then the second half turns into something quite dark. Still good, but just for me, not as interesting. I still give it five stars though. The next one I read was Franny and Zoe, which honestly was quite forgettable. I give it three stars. I don't know, this might be wrong, but basically how this book was created was J.D. Salinger wrote Franny's thing, put it in a newspaper, and then he wrote Zoe's thing, and then I believe he put it in the same newspaper, and then people were like, I love this, you should put it together. And then he just put the two stories in one book, and it became Franny and Zoe. That could totally be wrong. One thing about me, and you're not gonna, you're not gonna get this anywhere else on book two because they're very uh, smart and diligent. I will never do my research. That's one thing about me that you can always count on. I will never do my research. Ever. So that could completely be wrong. But the beginning, it starts with Franny. I think it's only like 40 pages. She's kind of just having a little bit of a mental breakdown at dinner with her boyfriend. And I found it so good. I was reading and I was like, this is, this is gonna be five stars. She's just freaking out at dinner. I thought it was written so well. I think in my mind, I was picturing Daisy Edgar Jones and Paul Miskal as the two people. And I love the normal people show. So that made it so fun. But then it switched to Zoe's perspective, who is her older brother by like five years. He's an actor and he just like was a dick. He was an actor who had had some success and he was staying at his parents' house. And I think there was only like three different scenes for him. Like Franny, the whole thing was in a restaurant, but he went from a bathroom to his dead older brother's room to the living room where Franny was. While he's in the bathroom, I think it takes up the majority of his story is just how having a conversation with his mother as he's in the bath and then gets out of the bath and starts getting ready. I was so flabbergasted as to how he treated his mother, especially in the 50s. I guess the 50s wasn't that long ago, but whenever I think of the 50s, I think of like, children are to be seen, not heard. But I guess that was more like the middle ages. I had a library book, but I took pictures of some pages. I, I got the receipts. Or some things he said to his mom on page 96, he says, you listening to this? You fat old druid, or are you just staring at my gorgeous face? And then instead of his mom being like, 
What the fuck? She says, certainly I'm listening. <laughs> you fat old druid. D-R-U-I-D. I don't even know what that is. What is that? Oh, it's like a fairy witch. That's cool. I would love to be called a, a druid. And then on page 147, he straight up just calls her fatty. Hi, fatty. She says, you just had a bath? And he goes, I'm late now, fatty. What? But maybe. I think this is kind of the perfect male manipulator book because in the beginning we have him writing a complex uh, woman character and she's just like a helpless waif ingenue who is having a mental breakdown. And then it cuts to Zoe who gets a lot more screen time and he just like is a piece of shit dirtbag who treats his mother like shit. The next one that I read was, um, you know, I gave it one star, and I don't want to spend too much time talking about it. I thought that I would just read the many little poems that I saved that caused me to give it a one star. I'm not going to read the full poems. I'm just going to read the parts that really stuck out to me. So this poem is called Me. <laughs> women don't know how to love, she told me. You know how to love, but women just want to leech. I know this because I'm a woman. <laughs> this one is just fucking ugly. This one's called Bee's Fifth, and it starts out with, I heard it first while screwing a blonde with the biggest box in Scranton. Which immediately I think of, like, The Office, of course. Scranton. How anyone could find anything redeemable in this book is so insane. This one I just found funny. This one's called The Second Novel. They'd come around and they'd ask, You finished your second novel yet? No. What's the matter? What's the matter that you can't finish it? Hemorrhoids and insomnia. Aww. Like that's, is this Seinfeld? What are we doing? I'm not even gonna bother with that one. This one's called Dog, very short. This is the, I'm gonna read the full poem. A single dog walking alone on a hot sidewalk of summer appears to have the power of 10,000 gods. Why is this? That's real. That's a real thing someone wrote. This one, I'm just gonna read the title. The night I fucked my alarm clock. Overall, so, so, so bad. So bad, so bad. I'm so curious to hear from somebody who enjoyed this. Why? Because I saw on Goodreads, there was quite a few people who gave this five stars. It was so shallow, empty of any and all everything. It was so immature. The next one that I read was Lolita, which I gave five stars because I think that it's an incredibly crafted book that has been given a really bad reputation by outside sources. I watched a video called like how the publishing industry failed Lolita, which I'll link below. He talks about how like the 1960 something movie by Stanley Kubrick turned this book, which is a dark drama into like a dark comedy. And that's where the sexualization of Lolita came from. And then the covers, this cover is a pretty good example. Supposedly the author author stated when he published the book that he did not want girls on the cover, period. He explicitly said no girls. Now, the covers of Lolita pretty much all have little girls on them. This is written like a memoir from jail from the main character Humbert Humbert's perspective. Humbert Humbert is an incredibly unreliable narrator. Lolita is a nickname he gives for Dolores. Her name is Dolores Hayes. He tells the story of him becoming Dolores' stepfather, who he ends up grooming, which is obviously incredibly disturbing. But what you really need to remember is that the stuff he's saying you can't trust. About halfway through, what I started realizing was in moments of hysteria, he refers to her as Lolita. In moments that are a bit closer to the truth, such as Dolores fighting back or doing something that isn't super promiscuous and closer to the actual reaction that a little girl would have to this scary older man. He refers to her as Dolores. And there will be moments, there will be chapters where it switches to him in his current state, sitting in his prison cell. The reputation it has and the culture that it's spawned is not the fault of the book in the slightest bit. Because reading it, it's very obvious that Humbert Humbert is the monster and that Dolores is just an innocent little girl who has been horribly wronged. The writing, I mean some of the best writing I've ever read. Yeah, I don't know.
It's such an interesting book. There was a cover in the video I watched, which I'll throw up. And in the video, he says that that's the cover that fits this book the best, which I can't agree with more because it is truly Humbert Humbert's story. And then the next one that I read was by the god of male manipulators, Haruki Murakami, A Wild Sheep Chase. Do you ever have those dreams where you wake up and it feels like you just ran a marathon? Like you had just experienced so goddamn much. 50 different locations, rapidly switching, most random motherfuckers pop out of nowhere, like, I don't know, you're on a boat in the middle of the ocean and your kindergarten teacher's there? But then just like that, you're in a Best Buy and somebody's got a gun. I don't know. It felt like that. There's so many different scenes switching so rapidly. You don't really know what's going on, but I feel like the writing is so witty. The characters are so intriguing. You can't help but keep on reading. I don't know. I think you should read it. So I'm not going to talk about like too much about what goes on because I think the best thing to do is just read it completely blind like put on a fucking blindfold and try to read it because it takes you on such an incredible journey. It reminded me a lot of like Wes Anderson movies. Super colorful, super atmospheric, super fast paced, tons of different characters coming in and out, but all of them being super memorable and such witty dialogue. And I'm so excited to read more from Hiroki Murakami. I don't know. I wouldn't qualify this as like a male manipulator book. There wasn't a whole lot of women in it though. I think there was only one. His girlfriend was in it. She was written as kind of like an idiot. Which, I mean, not a good look. But she also was a psychic, so I don't know. But yeah, those were the six books. I don't think I'm a male, male manipulator. You know, I tried it, I tried to live the experience, but out of all six of the books, I liked three of them. So I'm like a 50% 50, 50 male manipulator, which isn't too bad. <laughs> Let me know some other male manipulator books. Maybe I'll do it again. If I don't get canceled, I, no. Y'all wouldn't cancel me for this because like you would be at fault for that because if you were like offended by this video, that says a lot more about you than it says about me because it just means that you're like insecure in a really sad way. <laughs> I start gaslighting you. <laughs> I don't think I'm a male manipulator. I'll see you later, hopefully. I don't know. I'm going through it, kind of, but... Albert Camus.